Welcome to a Starter and a Chaser podcast with your hosts, Joe Clark and John Passo. I was thinking lately, yeah, I think Joe Artenzi is going to agree with me on this. Star Wars are the best kind of wars. Yeah. But speak. Oh, yeah, right. We're doing a show, dude. Uh, this is a Starter and a Chaser podcast where we review one beer, one whiskey weekly. I'm professional brewer John Passo. I am your whiskey connoisseur, Joe Clark. And today's episode oh. for The Chaser, we have from Akron, Ohio, Thirsty Dog, Ooh, local. Siberian Night Bourbon Barrel Age. Nice. And what do we have for the starter? We have Blanton's Straight From The Barrel. This bottle is a very special bottle to begin with, but one of our viewers, Joe Ortenzi, was gracious enough to donate a bottle to our podcast for review. So thank you very much, Joe. And if anybody else out there has a bottle of beer or whiskey that they would like to donate to the show for possible review, Absolutely. shoot us an email at uh, whiskeyandbeer at starterandchaser.com. So tell us about So this Blanton's. is a Blanton's. And uh, it, it was dumped on 11-217. Uh, it is from barrel number 60, warehouse H, Rick number 15. Oh, Rick 15. That's my favorite Rick. There's a lot of Ricks out there. Yeah, He's Steve's. number 15. <laughs> <laughs> Alcohol volume uh, is 65.7 or 131.4 proof. They always wow, have a nice label. So you see right there. Hopefully you guys get a good shot of that. That's and, high uh, proof, man. If you notice, just to actually, I'm going to grab yeah. our Blanton's here. It's a little bit smaller of a bottle. It's right around 700 milliliters where your regular Blanton's is at 750. Yeah. So there's a difference there. And for the Blanton's fans out there already know this, but every single Blanton's comes with a little horse and a letter. And every letter spells out Blanton's eventually. and the jockey will actually Including be this one. in a different position for each of the letters. So you got a fun little keepsake on there. Blanton's. Uh, that's another Buffalo Trace product, isn't it? It is. So it is, everybody calls that one the SFTB. So it is the straight from the barrel, meaning it is a cast strength offering. Um, it's, uh, what am I trying to say? It's the higher end of Blanton's. I think it's the highest end of Blanton's is the straight from oh. the barrel. There is also a gold, but I haven't had that one either. So if you guys want to donate a gold, <laughs> feel or free. We'll get one. We'll find one in the, right. in the wild sometimes. Mostly sold overseas and duty free. Um, it is now you very, very, <laughs> very, very recent, <laughs> very recently uh, being sold in America in limited quantities starting around now or maybe later spring or summer mm -hmm. or something like that. I can't remember when Ohio's release is, but it's, um, I think, in the next few months. It's coming. It's so coming. it's going to be a lottery bottle, obviously. Probably won't get one, but, you know, let's take a nose on this. Yeah. Actually, let's look at this. It's a nice darker color. Yeah. Um, darker browns, oh. much darker browns, yeah, but not the darkest that we've seen for sure. Super heavy, super heavy. Yeah, it is and definitely a super heavy oily. You can tell just by the way it's uh, kind of no, dripping down the almost no legs on that. Yeah, it, it is just real sticky on there. What are you smelling? So again, a Buffalo Trace product, I get that familiarity. You were talking about their yeast strain, so as being the possible source right. of what he identifies as the typical stone fruit note of Buffalo Trace. This one, it seems to be just really um, not super complex on the nose, surprisingly. Um, very caramely, just very heavy, heavy, heavy okay. caramel. Little vanilla, some of your typical stone fruits from Buffalo Trace. I think we just need to dive in it and Let's probably get punched it. in the face here. All right, that's <laughs> logic. Cheers. Mm. A little hit of alcohol right up front. Pretty hard hit for me. Yeah. This is, this is. It's hot. This is definitely hot. But. It's got the flavor. The, the flavor up. pops hard. <clears throat> Not super complex, John. Um, 
I don't know about that. Very go, caramel. I'm going to go for a second to, yeah. to really, okay. because that first Cody alcohol, mouth, he, yeah, sure. just really, you got to go back for a second to taste before you really sure. get a good idea. Ooh, there comes a fruit. Yeah. Wow. A lot of fruit. Wow. A lot of cherries. Oh yeah. It's like, a, it's not as dark as a bean cherry, but yeah, definitely a lighter cherry. Yeah. Wow. Almost want to say nectarine, but plua. What did the heat to plua on the second drink though? Um, it's just nice and warm, actually all through front, yes. mid, back, going down your chest. You feel this one. It's got, I mean, come on guys. It's, it's 131.4 proof. Uh, got the Kentucky hug. Of it. Yo, got the Kentucky, heavy Kentucky hug. hug, but you know what? I expect that out of a classic bourbon such as this. I, I mean, like, uh, some, sometimes I go for a drink, a bourbon. I want some heat. I want some something to really pack in the punch. Okay. Um, but I also want it to be backed up with good flavor too. This is actually mouthwatering. Yes, it and is. I don't know if that's the heat, the alcohol in there that's making my mouth water. Sometimes but with the heat, when you get a drink though, it dries it away. This is true too. This is, this is like uh, no. This is this is this is supple. Yeah. This, this is, is a nice, supple whiskey very which is succulent 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 supple both s's yeah, yeah. this is a good <laughs> <laughs> double s whiskey yeah <laughs> you heard it here on the starter and a chaser podcast <laughs> man i'm telling you what it is heavy on the stone fruits man big time on the cherry John. very fruit very fruit forward yeah um, the first that I got was a lot of caramel because I got a lot of that on the nose. I was probably transferring from maybe nose to palate. When you get it on the palate, um, it's just very fruity. Brown sugar I'm getting on the back end. Same here. A heavy brown sugar. And I'm starting to get a little bit of the barrel notes coming in. Sure, yeah. yeah. A little bit of the tannins, a little bit of the, the, the um, coconut. Yeah, okay. A little bit of coconut. A um, little bit of wood. It's not super splintery or anything like that okay this is this is really cool for cask strength to have this much flavor for for my palate is shocking it's crazy how cast strength products are coming out now and it's just you almost can't go back to i like blanton's it's a great daily drinker as do i um i, I respect it i don't actively hunt for it much anymore because it's just I'm kind of over it. Um, I'm, I'm really into things like this. Yeah. <laughs> I know I can't get it. But, uh, but, um, Thanks, Joe. Yes, uh, thank you, Joe. Mr. Joe Ortenzi, uh, this is incredible. Um, I really thank you for letting us try this. Um, I'm super excited to try uh, some of your other products that you do have, and I'll definitely be hitting you up on that. But um, <laughs> he is very generous with this. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. And by the way, cool tip for uh, the cat owners out there that are also whiskey lovers. Blanton's products, you know, including from the straight from the barrel and their regular one, have a wax coating around the outside and a cool little pull tab that gets the wax off. Cats love this shit, man. My cat goes nuts over this. <laughs> so both him and I appreciate Blanton's. Blanton's. <laughs> <laughs> so this is delicious. We will be back uh, after this short break. But before we go on break, if you are enjoying the podcast and are watching it on YouTube, mm. give us a like. Hit subscribe, hit the bell button, throw us a comment in the, uh, in the uh, comment section below. If you have a Blanton's and your cat loves the little pull tab too, let us know in the comments. But we'll be back. See you guys later. <laughs> and we're back. For the chaser, we have from Akron, Ohio, Thirsty Dog Brewing Company's Barrel Aged Siberian Night. And not just regular barrels, bourbon barrel aged. So, uh, Thirsty Dogs out of Akron, Ohio, it was started in 1997. They kind of specialize, yeah, nice gold top, in dog-themed beers. So they've got the old Leg Humper, they've got uh, Siberian Night for the, the wolf in the background. This one particularly has been bourbon barrel aged for 11 months. It's 11.6% ABV, 62 IBUs, a little higher on the hops. Wow. Uh, and this is actually a year-round offering that they have. It's not a special release. Wow. Cool. So let's crack this one open. Ooh, Imperial. I like the Imperials. Yeah, uh, Joe has had Ooh, one before. Look how dark 
that one is. Damn, dude. It's midnight. It's, and it's thick. This is pouring super oily, Syrupy. super heavy. Syrupy. Syrupy. It's got the syrups. Can I catch that? <laughs> Can I make a pill for that? The syrups? The syrups. Well, I got a shot for it. No pills. <laughs> so, not a ton of head. Wow. That means, you know, a lot of times that's not to be judged too harshly on a wow, barrel aged beer. The alcohol will knock down the head, but just Ooh. dark and thick as night. A Siberian night, as it were. You said higher on the hops. Higher on the hops mm -hmm. than typical for this style, I okay. would say. Are you picking up hops on the nose? I am. Okay. Yes, I am. So, yeah. I do not know what hops that I'm, they use. I'm this, shocked so. at the um, <clears throat> kind of like IPA ish a little bit on the nose. Yeah, just a little, not, not a lot, just a hint. Okay. I noticed it right away. You picking up any of the bourbon or. <sighs> yeah, there's some bourbon and barrel notes in there for sure. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I'm really excited to try this one. This seems to be a nice mix mash of some different things we've tried on the show, including whiskey, mm -hmm. uh, but like mashed into this beer and on the nose. And let's let's dig into this, dude. Prost. Cheers. Wow, that is syrupy. Mm. It is syrupy. It's Dang, not, that's heavy, dude. It's not super sweet, but there is no. a fair amount of like dark chocolate sweetness, molasses. almost molasses-y, yeah. almost Hershey's syrup a yeah. little bit, yeah. but not, not yeah. cloyingly so. Mm. Dang, dude. Bourbon. Yeah. Up front. Bourbon. Okay, if you want a, a beer to pair with your bourbon, <laughs> I don't think it gets any better than this. I mean, right. if you're drinking bourbon and beer, like you're drinking bourbon and beer right here, and you could definitely do them together, and this yeah. would complement each other. Another, I would say that if you're going out to a cigar shop, which you were talking about mm -hmm. a little ago, you bring a heavy bourbon and a heavy drink like this and smoking a cigar, this is it. Yeah. This is Holy absolutely crap, it. dude. The 62 IBU does wow. not come through on no. the palate. It was coming through for Joe on mm -hmm. the nose, but for me on the taste, nothing. I don't get any hops. Mm. Uh, I, I just get roasted wow. malt and uh, bourbon and chocolate. Dude, and like heavy, heavy. I am picking a hardcore burnt candy, brown sugar kind of note to it. Um, I don't know if I'm picking, if I'm really transferring to it to words. That. I might be able to see that. Um, a lot of malt to it. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what I'm picking up. It's like a, maybe it's more of like a caramely malt, really. Okay. Heavy caramely malt is what I'm getting after the yeah. third sip there. Yeah. Wow. This is heavy. It's it's oily. Medium I mean, this carbonation. Is like, man, this is like what you drain out of a car after 5,000 miles on an oil change, man. He, he would know. He's done it. <laughs> Yeah, it's what this I do is, for a living. And this just is thick on the glass. Oh, I mean, like it is, you know, like looking at a whiskey. It's got legs. For, for <laughs> you know beer, I mean? you like, generally don't judge. I mean, it coats the glass. Like that, but this is this is cool. Yeah, when you tip it and then pull it back, it's still brown. Yeah, here. yeah. That is hardcore. Man. Don't get this on your shirt, man. It'll no. Stay. Yeah. Mm. Wow, what a what an incredible beer. John, I think Imperials are my favorite so far. Okay, Absolutely. we've gone from, hey John, I think wheats, I think I'm a weeder, to, yeah. hey John, I like IPAs, to, hey John, I think Imperials are my favorite. Yeah, I think so Imperials are my favorite. So next week on a starter and chaser, <laughs> Joe's gonna discover fruit beers are his favorites. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> so far, the Imperial stout. I think this one, mm -hmm. this Imperial, is my favorite version of the Imperial. That you've this encountered. is incredible. Wow. This is, I like how heavy, thick, the molasses kind of taste to it. Um, it's almost, what am I trying to say? This molasses used to have it. Uh, like treacle it or kale? Um, kale, uh, can, uh, um, kale syrup? Kale. Yeah. Kale syrup. syrup. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's so what it tastes like. The dark, cause you have the light one and the dark one. Yeah. This tastes like the dark one. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool, man. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm pulling. So we are obviously gushing over this one, but mm. 
To take it back to the first product that we reviewed, Blanton's straight from the barrel. Joe, really? thumbs up, thumbs down. Yeah. You know it, man. Two thumbs up. It's Buffalo Trace. It's my favorite uh, bourbon distillery, period. Uh, I would say my favorite whiskey distillery in America, period. Um, they just continually knock it out of the park for me personally. And uh, they lived up to it again. For me, you know, upon that first sip, I was really worried. But that yeah, second were. sip, you know, the alcohol burn went away and it just opened up and it, it blew me away. So two thumbs up. Yeah. Michter's still my favorite distillery, but you know what, Buffalo Trace? You're now my second favorite distillery. Way to go. Keep up the great work. Now, Siberian Nights, like Siberian Days, are from Thirsty Dog Brewing Company. What are your thoughts on that? Incredible. Absolutely incredible. I'm going to do two thumbs up with the glass in my hand because it's, it's that He good. doesn't want to put it down. I don't want to put it down. This is tasty <laughs> as hell, man. And everybody should try this. Um, yeah, I can't say anything else to it. It's just, it's, it's taking the words out of my mouth. You know, I've had, it's been a long time since I've had this one. Um, back in the day when I used to drink it, I didn't have a bad thing to say Damn. about it. And now revisiting Damn. it, I still don't have a bad thing to say about it. Thirsty Dog, keep up the great work. Two thumbs up. Man, another day where we have practically two thumbs up on both products. This is knocking out of the park. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's, yeah. it's fantastic, man. So thank you for watching a Starter and a Chaser podcast. You can like us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube. We're on all the podcasting channels. Anchor, Spotify, uh, uh, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Breaker. Breaker, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. you can find us down in the links below. Shoot us an email if you want, uh, whiskey and beer at starterandchaser.com. And uh, we will see you next Wednesday for our newest edition of the podcast. But you're saying Star Wars are the best, Wars? Best, Wars? best kind of wars. You got Obviously, Vietnam was the worst kind of wars. Right. But